And Marshi, if I could say, by way of the first question that has come from the press, which really has to do with this, this rise of the rule of natural law, this emerging reality of a global country of peace, Marshi predicted that real signs of this, real evidence of this, would become more and more transparent even over the next 100 days or so. This because of the slow but continuing growth of larger and larger groups of peace-promoting experts throughout the world practicing Maharshi's yogic flying in groups. Well, it just so happens that since Maharshi made that prediction, there has already been a major sea change in the collective consciousness of the world, and certainly the collective consciousness of the United States, because now for the first time, the majority of the citizens of the United States no longer support President Bush's decision to go to war. They feel it was a mistake. They feel that they were misled. And this support for peace and reaction against the war, every evidence is that this majority is soon going to be an overwhelming majority at the rate this realization is dawning in the people. Moreover, an increasing number of states throughout the country in response have passed resolutions calling for a new national department of peace. Understanding that peace is more than just the absence of war, many states throughout the country are passing resolutions calling for the establishment of a national department of peace. And this department of peace would be specifically to promote innovative but scientifically proven peace-promoting technologies. And within this Department of Peace, there is statute that says that a new university of world peace should be founded, a university that is solely dedicated to the prevention of war and the promotion of peace. The precise language of these resolutions has really been taken from Maharshi and also specifically from the Natural Law Party of the United States. So a real, I would say, infusion of Marshi's thoughts from his continuous presence in addressing the press week after week and from the influence of these growing groups of peacemakers in the world has really produced a sea change in the shift of a civilization or at least a country that seemed to be so strongly in favor of offensive means of defense to a new society, a new civilization in the US that strongly favors peace with new legislation emerging that is calling for a whole new department to ensure peace. So does Maharshi, upon hearing these, this recent shift in the people, does Maharshi perhaps attribute this to early signs of the transformation of society from violence to peace as a result of the increasing influence of Maharshi's efforts and his coherence creating groups throughout the world? The credit goes and will always go to the increasing number of peace-creating people. Our efforts for creating peace are or can be seen on two levels. One level is the harmonizing influence of the recitation of the Vedic text. It is the Vedic text that from its own level in the transcendental field it maintains liveliness of the unmanifest value which maintains the functioning of total natural law. And functioning total natural law at the basis of all activity of the universe is that commanding intelligence is that administrative intelligence which administers the activity of the enormously diversified galactic universe. 
So as the influence becomes more and more saturated, the confusion and disharmony in the world consciousness, in the consciousness of the universe, will become more and more natural. It will become more and more in accordance with the constitution of the universe. So the whole thing, whether one understands or not, the consciousness in the world or world consciousness depends upon how many people at least, how many people are functioning from that unified field, from that level of the unified field, how many people are. And it has been found about 8,000 in one place would create enough saturation that will radiate harmony and correct and improve the disharmony, disharmonious influence in the environment. So this recitation of the Vedic text is one value. The second value is human awareness identifying itself with the transcendental field. This is through transcendental meditation. The nature of the transcendental field is absolute harmony, oneness, singularity, unified field. And as more and more people join hands together, and the scientists have calculated during the past years that the square root of 1% of the world's population, square root of the world's population, 1% of the world's population practicing yogic flying, that means having their control on the enormous power of gravity, they will have that influence of coherence, of togetherness, of harmony, that the whole world consciousness will not have negative trends or negative thoughts. No one will harm anyone. So enmity will be eliminated. Friendship will, be pre will prevail. So 8,000 people in one place. 8,000 people in one place. 8,000 people in one place. This we are trying to, to, to gather together. And in any engineering, four or six times the, what they call it, safety factor four times safety factor. So if a 8,000 group is needed, better have four times that or five times that. So we have targeted a group of 40,000 yogic flyers in any part of the world. If they practice yogic flying, the world will never get into any 
negative thoughts, negative trends, the world will never have to face problem. We are gathering more and more people, we are gathering more and more people, we are gathering more and more people, and definitely the number is increasing day by day, but the number is not enough. Number is not enough to have really achieved the goal of world harmony. So whatever days are needed for us to have two, three, four, five <laughs> groups of 8,000, that is the time needed for the world to become completely free from negativity. Everyone will live the light of God in his own religion. Politics will find its, uh, its supreme goal. Purpose of politics is be all together, helpful to each other. Purpose of economy is no one is in scarcity. That we are that we are trying to get and as soon as more and more, more is possible, the world is going to be absolutely influenced by the bright destiny for all mankind, a very bright destiny for all mankind. Something better should happen, something better should happen, and all depends upon how soon we are able to get to larger number, larger number, larger number. It's not an idea. It is a well-calculated mathematical conclu conclusion that if the world is to be a planet of peace, then this is what is going to be at its basis, at its basis, at its basis. It's a very beautiful thought, and our efforts are quickly do it, as quickly do it as possible. Huh? Your observation, the observation of the, of the, of the, thinker who raised the point is very well sorted out. He sees change, 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 and this is really true that as the intensity of light grows, the darkness vanishes. As the intensity of light grows, the darkness vanishes, and when the intensity of light is very much, then far and wide the light will spread. So for the world population to enjoy a problem-free life, we need two, three, four times safety factor of these 8,000 yogic flyers, 8,000 yogic flyers. Any government could supply, any government could supply, any government could supply, and that government will be a permanent government of the country. <laughs>